Hi, I'm Jerry Boyer. You're watching the Eagle Investing Network. Make sure to hit subscribe and make sure to share this video with somebody who you think might benefit and become a better investor. Uh, we've been looking in a series um, at the issue of boards of directors. Boards of directors do not get the attention that they deserve. CEOs, they're in the spotlight, but boards of directors are over CEOs or at least they're supposed to be, and that's part of the issue. Um, are they really functioning to supervise CEOs on behalf of the shareholders? It's the job of the board to make sure that the CEO knows that he or she worked for you, the investor. But cronyism can get into the picture. Uh, CEOs can kind of arrange things so that um, board members end up kind of beholden to them. Or board members can get stretched too thin so that they really don't have the time and energy to oversee what a CEO is doing. That problem is called overboarding. Uh, you go overboard with how many boards you're on. Let's take a look at some of the data. Uh, so we have, in this case, these are directors who are also executives. Are they on lots and lots of boards? I'm not going to get into the details and the methodology of how this is flagged, but maybe you're on lots of boards. That would be a yes. Or maybe you're not on lots of boards. Well, does it make a difference for returns? So let's um, go here and see. Th this is a situation where they're on a lot of boards. Um, board, board members who are also executives are on a lot of boards. This is a situation where they're on a reasonable number of boards. They're not stretched too thin, presumably. Flagged for being on too many boards, not flagged for being on too many boards. This is what the returns are for investors in the company in the following year. This is higher than this which means those who are not practicing this non-best practice of overboarding are doing better, at least in this particular time frame that we have data for, than these. So in this case, board members are stretched too thin. And you know, this is really an issue when it comes to members of a board of directors, because if you've ever been on a board of directors, and I've been on a few, you have a situation where the CEO comes into the meeting and the CEO has a CFO and a COO. There's lots of people who work for them and they all have staff and they've got binders full of information. There are all sorts of people working for them and they can overwhelm you with information. And you're just kind of there part time. You might be putting in like 100 hours a year or something. It's like a very part time job for you. You don't have that same depth. So you can kind of get overwhelmed with the responsibility of reining in these people who actually have all these little worker bees who are working for them. So if you're on four or five boards or six or seven or even more boards, that's a problem. Another problem is sometimes people make a career out of being on boards, which means that their income depends on being on boards, which means they don't want to get kicked off boards, which means they don't want to tick off the CEO or the management team. So whether they get kind of beholden because this is now how they make their living or whether they just get stretched so thin um, that they can't really do the job right, they may not be effective in doing their job. What's their job? Looking out for you. That is the job of a member of a board of directors of a publicly traded company. They have a fiduciary responsibility to put you, the investor, first. The CEO is the hired help. It takes a strong, focused board to take a big ego CEO. And it's okay if they have a big ego, just so long as it's like, you know, like a stallion, just so long as there's a fence around that stallion to kind of rein them in and make sure that they understand who they work for. And we see in this particular case, it makes a difference in the historical data, at least in the past, when it comes to performance. We're going to continue to take a look at board performance and whether boards are operating properly or whether boards are doing things that are not best practices and maybe hurting your, um, your investment returns as we continue this series. I'm Jerry Boyer. This is the Eagle Investing Network. Hit subscribe. Keep learning.